Why do I like mathematics? Sometimes there is a problem in life that has no answer. Perhaps a child has trouble learning. Perhaps someone becomes ill. Perhaps there was love, but now there is conflict. These problems are hard to solve. There is no single answer. Many people have opinions on what is the best answer. But in mathematics, there is an answer, a single answer that is right. There is no doubt. There is no argument. This answer is right. If we ask, "What is five plus seven?" the answer is twelve. If we ask, "How do you raise a child?" the answer would depend on the child and the parents. Sometimes there is more than one way to reach an answer. Imagine we want to find the area of a triangle. The triangle has a right angle. The two sides surrounding the right angle are twenty millimeters and thirty millimeters. The formula for the area of a triangle is one half of base height. We could consider the twenty millimeter side as the base, and thirty millimeters as the height. We could consider the thirty millimeter side as the base, and the twenty millimeter side as the height. Both ways would produce the same answer. The area is three hundred square millimeters. Alternatively, we could consider the base as the third side of the triangle, and then we would have to draw a height and measure it. The height would be neither twenty nor thirty. But still, we would end up with the same answer. In math, the answer does not change. Another reason I like math is the way it brings order. There can be a whole set of numbers or a whole set of measurements that mean nothing until mathematics organizes them into a pattern. An average number can be found. Graphs can be drawn. The spread of the numbers and probabilities of a certain number happening can be calculated. This is like having a whole lot of dirty dishes after supper. Applying math is like washing and sorting the dishes and putting them back into the cupboard. Math is a powerful tool. Math should be our friend, and we will find more ways to use it to better our lives. Snow. Snow is the white substance that falls to the ground during cold weather conditions. Each tiny piece of snow, called a snowflake, is a very small amount of water that has frozen into an unusual shape. During the winter months, huge numbers of snowflakes fall to the ground, covering the land in a white blanket of snow. In many parts of the world, people never see any snow. Snow only falls when there is moisture in the air, and when the temperature falls below the freezing point of water, which is zero degrees Celsius. During the winter, snow falls instead of rain. One advantage of snow is that it allows many fun outdoor activities. Children like to play in the snow. For example, they may make a snowman by rolling snow into a large ball and then placing these balls of snow on top of each other in the shape of a person. Another fun activity in the snow is skiing. Skis are very long, thin, flat pieces of hard material that one wears on one's feet. Wearing skis allows a person to slide along the surface of the snow. People can ski down the side of a hill, traveling at great speeds. Many people find the sport of downhill skiing to be very exciting. Some people like to ski along flat ground, often traveling great distances. This sport, called cross-country skiing, is an excellent way to develop physical fitness. Of course, snow also causes some problems. Snow can make driving dangerous because falling snow makes roads slippery, and on a windy day, blowing snow can make it difficult to see very far. It can also be a lot of work to remove snow from the roads and sidewalks.
Snow is a heavy substance, and it must be cleared away using a shovel or a large machine. Many people love the beauty of the land when it is covered by snow. The white covering of snow over the fields and trees can give a feeling of peace and calm. If you have never seen snow before, you should someday experience this strange and wonderful substance. My sister's visit to Canada. My sister had never been to Canada, but came for a visit last April. I picked her up at the airport in Toronto and drove her through the traffic and multi-lane highways, past the grapevines and peach trees to Niagara Falls, where I live. She was very tired from the flight and soon slept. The first day, we walked to see the falls. The spray from the falls drifts high into the air and across the people standing to watch. There are people from all over the world watching the water and using their cameras. Because it was April, there was still ice beside the water, huge chunks of ice that looked like white rocks. In the river, there were floating pieces of ice moving downstream. The next day, we went to the town where the Niagara River joins Lake Ontario. The weather was warm. We walked a long way, and our feet were hot. So we went down to the edge of the water to put our feet in. One toe in was enough. The water was so cold it made our feet ache. A piece of ice drifted beside our feet. I put one foot in for a second, then out, as the pain of the cold went right through me. My sister could not understand how it could be so warm, but there was still ice. Another day we went to see my daughter. She is living on a farm, an hour's drive away. We walked through her trees. The buds were starting to turn into leaves. We stopped and looked at the spring wildflowers. We climbed across a creek by walking over a fallen tree. We saw the footprints of raccoons by the water. There was fresh air and sunshine and blue sky. On the way home, we stopped for hamburgers and fries at a drive-through restaurant. She had never been to a drive-through restaurant before. Then we went to a donut shop. There are no donut shops where she lives. There was a choice of twenty different types of donuts: some round, some with holes, some with frosting, some with jam inside. Each was different. The days passed quickly, and soon it was time to take her back to the airport. Some of the trees now had leaves. Some of the tulips were now blooming. It was hard to say goodbye to my sister. I hope we can visit again soon. Bedtime. I am almost nine years old, and my bedtime is eight thirty p.m. I think that is so unfair. I think I am old enough to stay up until at least nine p.m. My parents say that I have to go to bed early because I have school the next day. I can't wait until I am grown up and can stay awake as long as I want. Even though I think I should be able to go to bed later, I do like our nighttime routine. At about eight fifteen p.m., my mom sends us upstairs to put on our pajamas. When we come back downstairs, we read together. Sometimes mom will read to us, and sometimes we will read to her. If dad is not working, he will sometimes read too. Mostly, it is mom we read with, though. When we read, mom helps us with words we cannot read. We have to try and sound the word out. But if we are really stuck, she will help us. If we come to a place in our reading where we do not understand the meaning of what was written, we stop reading and look at mom. She will tell us what it means or help us figure it out on our own. After we are finished reading, we say good night to everyone in the house. First, we say good night to mom and give her a hug and a kiss. Then we do the same for dad, then our little sister, and then our dog. Afterwards, we go upstairs and brush our teeth. I have to do special stretching exercises for the muscles in my chest and legs, or I get pains when I run and play. I do my stretching before I get into bed. After my exercises, either my brother or I turn off the lights. We share a bedroom, so we take turns turning the light off. Before we get into bed, we say our prayers. After we get into our beds, my brother and I talk to each other for a long time. 
We tell each other about our day or about what we hope will happen in the future, about our friends and all sorts of other important things. After a while, we get so tired we just fall asleep in the middle of talking. Even though we go to bed at 8.30 p.m., we talk so long we don't go to sleep until about 10 o'clock p.m. I still do not know why I have to go to bed so early when I'm not even tired.